Hey everybody, this is Deep Track Zach. I'm back for another video, and uh, this is a special one. It's the uh, Vinyl Community Tag 2021 that uh, Andrew from Tales from the Crate started a few days ago. Um, I've been watching his channel for, I don't know, about four or five years, and really enjoyed his videos, but uh, this is the first time I've ever participated in the Vinyl Community Tag, so. Uh, I really like the list he came up with, and here is mine. Um, first one's a discovery you made in the year 2020. Um, I had a few, but um, the most significant and my favorite discovery of 2020 is Amancio da Silva, and I had never heard of him before, so I think I ran across one of his videos on YouTube and really liked the guitar style, which he was a Indian uh, jazz guitarist that recorded in Great Britain. And I actually picked up two of his albums, which are both reissue imports from the UK. This is um, Integration, and uh, I think they're both from 1969, but this one's just titled uh, Amancio da Silva Integration. And the other one that I got of his is uh, Hum Dono, or Dono, I'm not sure how they pronounce it, but it's kind of a collaboration. I think Amancio wrote most of the songs, but he has uh, Joe Harriet on sax on this, Dave Green on bass, and Brian Spring on drums, and a British uh, studio vocalist named Norma Winstone does some vocals on it. Oh yeah, and Ian Carr plays the trumpet. Um, but yeah, that's the other Amancio de Silva. So I was glad to get two of his albums this year. <clears throat> um, the next thing is a quarantine buy, which I was fortunate. Um, my business has been categorized as, um, uh, what's the word they use? Um, can't think of the word, um, essential. <laughs> I'm in the hardware business and it was essential. So I never got quarantined this year, but during the quarantine, I was like everybody else, just looking around Discogs and eBay because all the record shops were closed. But I got a record I've been looking for for a while, which is um, second generation bluegrass by Ricky, a young Ricky Skaggs and Keith Whitley. They uh, kind of broke free from Ralph Stanley's band um, in the early to mid 70s. I think this was from 1973 maybe. Anyway, it's kind of a hard record to find. It's on old Rebel Records bluegrass label. Yeah, there's a uh, Teenage Ricky Skaggs and Keith Whitley doing some traditional bluegrass tunes. So, yeah, that was one of my favorite quarantine time buys there. All right, the next one is an LP you want to find in 2021. Uh, this record has eluded me for a long time, but I think I'm really going to zero in on it this year, and that would be Steve Young, the uh, country rock artist, his debut solo album, which is called Rock, Salt, and Nails. It can be quite pricey, and I think I almost snagged one this year on eBay, but somebody outbid me. But yeah, that's what I'd like to find this year, is uh, Steve Young's Rock, Salt, and Nails. Um... A box set. Uh, this was a big acquisition for me this year. I sold a bunch of records and had some money in my PayPal and uh, decided to spring for this box set from Vinyl Me Please. You might have heard of it, but it's uh, called The Story, Story of the Grateful Dead. Real nice box with a cool inside. Um, yeah, I took the records out of it. Um, it's got Live Dead, Working Man's Dead, American Beauty, Europe 72, which 
is a record, another album that eluded me for a long time. I finally got it in this box set. Uh, Wake of the Flood. These are all colored vinyl too and uh, cut from the original tapes. Um, I'm gonna show this one. This is my favorite colored vinyl because it just matches the album cover so good. It's kind of a Coke bottle of green. It matches the uh, sky color on Wake of the Flood. Yeah, that's that. Um, yeah, it's got uh, Europe 72, Reckoning, Wake of the Flood, Terrapin Station, and then uh, Without a Net, which is an early 90s, highly sought after triple LP live set, Without a Net. It's, uh doesn't have nearly all their albums, but real good highlights of it. There's the set. All right. Wow. That's a heavy one. That's my box set. Um, what's the next thing? A concept album. I don't think I've ever heard anybody uh, allude to this as a concept album, but I'm going to go with Neil Young, Tonight's the Night. This is, I just, I love this record. And um, it starts out with the song Tonight's the Night and then ends with it also, another version. But all the songs uh, just have that same mood. It's He was kind of in a dark mood at the time, somber mood, because he had lost some friends to drug abuse. Um, it's got Tonight's the Night, Speaking Out, World on a String, Borrowed tune. Um, Roll another number for the road. Albuquerque. Those two songs are real similar. Uh, got a lot of steel guitar. Uh, New Mama. Look out, Joe. Tired eyes. That's a great one. Another moody, kind of dark song, but Neil does it as good as you can do it. And then, like I said, it ends with tonight's the night. So I'm going to go with that for my concept album. All right. Next, we've got an album where an artist changed direction. We'll go with Bob Dylan, bringing it all back home. This is where he actually did his first electric um, folk rock tunes on this album. Half of it was electric, the first half. Then side B was, he went back to acoustic, but it really took the folkies by storm. And you probably know the story of them booing him, trying to boo him off stage back in 66 when he went electric. But uh, this has the first side, the electric side is subterranean homesick blues. She belongs to me, Maggie's farm, love minus zero, no limit. Outlaw Blues, On the Road Again, and Bob Dylan's 115th Dream. Um, and then uh, the acoustic side, side two, has Mr. Tambourine Man, Gates of Eden, It's All Right, Ma, I'm Only Bleeding, It's All Over Now, Baby Blue. But this is, this is where he first plugged in and took the folk world by storm. And uh, his follow-up album the same year was... Highway 61 revisited. And that was all electric, I think. But uh, this is where it all started. And he truly changed direction for the good. <clears throat> all right, what do we have next? Um, white Label Promo. This was a big find for me this year. And uh, amazingly, I found it in a White Label Promo. This is a obscure album country rock album by Terry Reed, who was solo back in the late 60s. And he actually turned down an offer from Jimmy Page to be the lead singer of Led Zeppelin before they went to Robert Plant. But uh, Terry Reed wanted to stick to his career. But yeah, this is from 1974 and it's um, produced by Graham Nash, but it's really a great album. And highly sought after in collector circles. But, uh, yep, it's a white label promo on ABC Records. It's called Seed of Memory, if I didn't mention that. Um, 
the great songs on here. I mean, they're all good songs, but Faith to Arise, Seed of Memory, Brave Awakening, To Be Treated Right, Ooh Baby, Make Me Feel So Young, The Way You Walk, The Frame, and Fooling You. But side one's great with Faith to Arise, Seed of Memory, and Brave Awakening. Those are just three great songs all in a row on side one. But that's my white label promo. Terry Reed, Seed of Memory. Let's see. Compilation album. I'm going to go with The Beatles' Hey Jude. This is a compilation, a collection of uh, non-album songs and uh, B-sides. Like Hey Jude, Revolution, Paperback Writer, I Should Have Known Better, Lady Madonna. Can't Buy Me Love, Don't Let Me Down, Ballad of John and Yoko, Rain and Old Brown Shoe. I think this spans from about 1966 to 1970. Um, but I've always loved this compilation and love the cover. Beatles, circa 1970, I believe. There's the back. The Beatles, uh, Untitled compilation, which everybody refers to as Hey Jude. <clears throat> what do we have next? Um, album that tells a story or that you've got a story about. I'm not going to go with an album. I'm going to go with probably my biggest find ever. And that is my old 78 Blind Willie McTell Drive Away Blues and love changing blues. As you may or may not know, it's really hard to find these old blues 78s, but uh, I was on my way home from work one Saturday, and uh, it was probably about five o'clock, and I passed a garage sale, and I saw them bringing stuff inside like it was about to end, so I just passed on by, and then something told me to turn around and go back to that garage sale, so I turned around, and uh, walked up to the garage and the woman asked me what I was looking for. And I said records and she had two or three, you know, throwaways up in there. And uh, I said, nah, I started to walk away and she goes, well, I also have some of those real old records inside that were my grandfather's. I said, uh, yeah, I collect those. And um, she came out with a stack, probably about two feet high. And I looked through I don't know, the first 10 or 12, and I saw a few good old country titles and maybe a Louis Armstrong and another blues title, but I didn't see this one initially. But I offered her an amount for the whole stack, which wasn't a whole lot, and I brought them home, and I was looking at them later that night, and about half of them were cracked, but I got about three-quarters of the way uh, through the stack, and I saw this, and my jaw dropped. So, yeah, that's my story about the Blind Willie McTell. I think it's from 1929. Victor Records, recorded in Atlanta, Georgia. All right. Let's see. The next thing is an album that needs a vinyl pressing. I've uh, mentioned this to people for years and years, but um, one genre that's neglected... Um, a great period of music was uh, early 90s country music, which I refer to as the early 90s country gold rush. Um, not many things were put on vinyl, and if they were, nowadays they're really hard to get, really expensive. But this has never been put on vinyl, which is Dwight Yoakam's This Time. I think it's from 1992. And this would just make a marvelous vinyl reissue. It's got uh, Pocket of a Clown, A Thousand Miles from Nowhere, uh, This Time, Two Doors Down, Ain't That Lonely Yet, King of Fools, Fast As You, Try Not to Look So Pretty, Wild Ride, and Lonesome Roads. And it would just, it would make my year if this was reissued. Um, they could even make the center label have that picture right there on it. But yeah, that's Dwight Yoakam this time. It needs to be on vinyl. 
All right. Let's see. All right. Common and Uncommon Album. Uh, these two kind of have a theme because both artists were in the band Faces. For the Common Album, I'm going to go with Rod Stewart's Every Picture Tells a Story. I see this a lot, you know, digging around, but and it is a wonderful album. It's great. One of the best of the 70s. It's got uh, Every Picture Tells a Story, Tomorrow is Such a Long Time, uh, the Bob Dylan cover, Mandolin Wind, just a great, great song. Seems Like a Long Time, I'm Losing You, the old Motown cover, Reason to Believe, Tim Harden's song, and the biggest hit on here is Maggie May. And he also does a cover of That's All Right, Mama, the old Elvis tune. But still, it's real common. Rod Stewart, Every Picture Tells a Story. And uh, here's the Uncommon album by another member of the Faces. Ronnie Lane. This is the front cover, actually. And the album's called uh, Anymore for Anymore. It's from 1974. This is, you can only get it um, on a UK import. It's never been issued in the United States. Um, I bought this on eBay seven or eight years ago. And it's a wonderful rock, folk rock, country rock album by the late, great Ronnie Lane. <clears throat> uh, Careless Love, Don't You Cry For Me, By and By, Gonna See The King, The Poacher, Roll On Babe, Tell Everyone, Anymore For Any More, the title track. That's great. Only a Bird in a Gilded Cage and Chicken Wired is the last song. But yeah, that's my uncommon album. Ronnie Lane, Any More for Any More. <clears throat> okay, the next thing is an EP. I grabbed two of my EPs. I could not decide on which one to show. Uh, first one is Captain Beefheart. Um, and his magic band, the legendary A&M Sessions. This has um, some sessions that he did in 19, I think it's 1966 or 67. Um, it's just great blues rock, blues slash garage rock um, uh, compilation. And there's only five songs, so it's a five song EP. It's got Diddy Wad Diddy, Who Do You Think You're Fooling, Moonchild, Frying Pan, Here I Am, I Always Am, and all great songs. That's Captain Beefheart, Legendary A&M Sessions. And my next AP is uh, Steely Dan 4s. Uh, this one, this has four songs. It was released in 76, I think. But what's neat about it is it has two songs that weren't on their debut album, which is, what was that called? I can't think of the name of it, but uh, Can't Buy a Thrill, 1972. But uh, it has Do It Again, which was on Can't Buy a Thrill. And the second song on side one is called Dallas, which is kind of a country rocker. It wasn't on their debut album. Then Haitian Divorce. Um, that was on one of their mid-70s albums. And Sail the Waterway, which is the other one from 72 that wasn't on Can't Buy a Thrill. But that's my, another EP, Fours by Steely Dan. ABC Records. <clears throat> All right, girl group. Um, I'm kind of ashamed to say this, but I don't have a girl, girl group album in my house that I could find or that I could think of. So I just went with a, a girl, a woman, uh, going with Cher's album recorded in Muscle Shoals, Alabama, 3614 Jackson Highway. This is uh, probably her best record. Um, I think it's from 1969. Um, I got this in an antique store said uh, 78, I mean, not 78, seven or eight years ago. And it's a promo. 
and I don't think the person selling it saw this, but real faint writing up in the top left corner is a signature. And it looks like it's signed by Sonny Bono and Cher, from what I can read. Yeah, it says, your friend, they wrote something I can't read, and it says, your friend, Sonny and Cher. But yeah, that's Cher's 36. 14 Jackson Highway, recorded in Muscle Shoals in 1969. All right. Oh, what do we have next? Um, an album cover you love. I found this at the last minute. I thought of it. I've always loved this album cover. The late, great Billy Joe Shaver. <clears throat> Old five and dimers like me. Um... Sadly, we lost him this year, like we did many, or last year in 2020, like we did many great musicians. But I've always loved this cover because he's one of the original outlaws, outlaw country artists. And right there it says, do not stand in doorway. That old outlaw is standing in the doorway. <laughs> but yeah, that's Billy Joe Shaver's old five and dimers like me. That's my... Original monument copy from 1973. All right. <clears throat> um, next we have an album you've li listened to the most. For me, that's got to be Bob Dylan, Blood on the Tracks. Probably his best album. Just every song is epic. It's wonderful. And what's neat is a couple of years ago on Record Store Day, I got the alternate test pressing version, which has more of like stripped down versions of all Blood on the Track songs. It was the earlier recordings that he kind of shelved. Um, so yeah, between that, both versions of that, that's what I listen to the most or have listened to the most. Bob Dylan's Blood on the Tracks. Recorded in 1974. Okay. Let's see. We got the next category is an album you had to get an OG copy of. I actually got this last year um, on a trip to North Carolina with my brothers when we visited um, Noble Records. We went to a couple other record stores. And at one of the other ones... I found a record that I've been looking for an OG copy for, for, oh, probably 20 years. I bought a reissue years ago from Four Men With Beards, which didn't sound that great. I mean, it was a good placeholder for 15 years or so, but now I got an OG. The old, I think it's uh, A&M Records tan label. Yep, it is Gilded Palace of Sin. The uh, pioneering psychedelic country rock record by the Flying Burrito Brothers. There's uh, Chris Hillman, Graham Parsons, Sneaky Pete, and what's the other guy's name? I can't even remember. Uh, what's the other guy? Chris Etheridge, bass player right there. And there are two groupies or whatever. Yep, that's my OG, Flying Burrito Brothers, Gilded Palace of Sin, 1969. Okay, last album you purchased. Oh, this one's neat. I went to an antique store about five days ago, and he had put out some new stuff, and he had a soul album that I've been looking for for a long time, and it was way underpriced. And that's James Carr's, James Carr, You Got My Mind Messed Up. This is a wonderful soul album uh, from 1968, I think. Um, but yeah, I, <laughs> he had it way underpriced. I paid under $20. I think it was $17. And this has a medium... Median value on Discogs for around 200 But that's uh, 
James Carr, you got my mind messed up on gold, gold wax, I think is the label. Yep, gold wax records. Just good southern soul music. He kind of sounds like Otis Redding. Um, but it's got uh, probably the best um, song on here, which is actually a, on a 45 single, is um, Dark End of the Street, the Chips Moment and Dan Penn song. But every song's good. Um, pouring Water on a Drowning Man. Um, These Ain't Raindrops. Lovable Girl. And the last songs you got, the title track, You've Got My Mind Messed Up. But yeah, that's that was my last purchase. Along with some other records, but that's my favorite one. James Carr, You Got My Mind Messed Up. A Soul Grill. <clears throat> okay, an album they don't get. Uh, I had a hard time finding this one, but... Um, I went with the Birds, Sweetheart of the Rodeo. Because at the time, uh, a lot of Birds fans didn't get it. Because they went from folk rock and dabbling a little bit in country rock to straight up traditional country on this one. Yeah, Graham Parsons got with them and really, uh, really um, influenced Roger McGuinn and the rest of the band to record a set of just hardcore traditional country songs. I'm sure everybody knows this one. Uh, it's got You Ain't Going Nowhere, I Am a Pilgrim, beautiful song. The Christian Life, You Don't Miss Your Water Till Your Well Runs Dry, You're Still On My Mind, Pretty Boy Floyd, a Woody Guthrie song, uh, Graham Parsons' original Hickory Wind, 100 Years From Now, Blue Canadian Rockies, Life in prison, nothing was delivered. But just great, great country rock record. And uh, that they didn't get at the time, or a lot of people didn't get. <clears throat> okay, a punk album or closest? I do not have any punk albums, but this is the closest thing I have, and it's a reissue of the Stooges Funhouse. Um, but it's uh, kind of a rock, you know, psychedelic rock. It's not straight up punk, but I like it. It's really good. And some people consider it their best album. But what's neat about this reissue is it's got that original Electra label and it's on a beautiful orange, red, black, kind of multicolored vinyl. And that is my closest to a punk album, The Stooges Funhouse. <clears throat> All right. The last topic here is your favorite 2020 reissue. And this one is the same for a lot of people in the VC. I've seen a few of these videos and a lot of people are showing it. And that's Tom Petty Wildflowers. But this isn't in the reissue that most people are showing. This is a, uh, a bootleg that I bought real early in 2020, probably in February. Um, I think it was from Europe. Um, but what's cool about this, it's on a gold colored vinyl. It doesn't have the right label, as you can see, but it's on a beautiful gold colored vinyl. And it sounds great. I mean, I can barely tell the difference between this one and the... I also got the uh, official release, Wildflowers and all the rest. I got that one, you know, later in 2020. But that is my favorite 2020 reissue. Tom Petty, the long-awaited reissue of Tom Petty's Wildflowers. All right, that's... That's it for me. I want to thank Andrew again at Tales from the Crate, and I hope you enjoyed my selections. See you all next time. Bye-bye.